Hello and welcome to Faith Matters, the show where we take a spiritual look at Merseyside life and culture. And today we are here with our guest, Ellen Loudon, who um, has just been appointed as Canon Chancellor for Liverpool Cathedral and also Director of Social, Social Justice, Justice. Yep, for Liverpool Diocese. Yep. So a very warm welcome, Thank Ellen. Thank you very much. Now, that's quite a mouthful, that title. Yep, yep. Now, you have been on Faith Matters before, but yep. you were in a different role that time. And this is, you're in your new role now just for two days? Yes, that right? two days. So the last time I was on Faith Matters, I was um, the vicar at St Luke's Church, which is next to Goodison in Walton. Mm -hmm. um, so I was there for four years and just into the job now. So my new role here in Liverpool Diocese as the Director for Social Justice and Canon Chancellor at the Cathedral. Now, for some of us, possibly even including clergy, they don't know what a canon chancellor is. <laughs> <laughs> so can you explain to us just a little bit about that role first yeah. and then about the director? So the canon um, chancellor in our cathedral in Liverpool, in the Anglican Cathedral here, is um, I've been um, specifically asked to look at the fairness um, and well-being of the cathedral and the cathedral community and how that um, also affects fairness and well-being for the city that mm -hmm. it serves. So um, quite, I suppose they kind of seem like kind of easy things to say, but there are lots of people who have relationships with the cathedral that not just the people that work there, not just the clergy or the people that worship there, but all the visitors and the way that the, the cathedral interacts with the city and about making sure that those things are fair for as many people, that they are accessible, that people um, understand and appreciate them in the broadest sense mm. and also to enhance people's well-being so how does the cathedral church enhance the well-being of our city mm. and the people that have relationship with the cathedral right now so that's interesting it sounds as though you in some ways don't um differentiate between the two roles that you see them very much overlapping yeah. would that be right yeah i hope so i mean two days in it's difficult to see exactly how that will manifest itself in reality mm. But I think that those two things are, are kind of complement each other and uh, layer on to each other. So in terms of the cathedral, that's a specific place. Mm. But the idea of working out God's justice in the world and, uh, and how that works out in our diocese, mm. I guess that's, um, that will be evident in lots of different places. So exploring how different communities work out and live out God's justice mm. is part of my other part of my role. Right. And, and uh, is the Director of Social Justice, I'm right in thinking that's a, a, an entirely new role for the diocese. Yeah. So do you know what led to that role being developed? I don't exactly know what led to it, but I know that there was um, a desire for a slight change in emphasis in the way that um, this kind of work is articulated. So the diocese has always been doing justice work, social justice work. It's not a new thing with my appointment, but the way that it's being um, articulated in, in this role is that it is perhaps something that um, we would like as a diocese to emphasise mm. as something that we are already doing, mm. that we are engaged in justice work and that our inter, inter, um, re the relationship that we have with our communities is about making sure that God's justice is evident. Um, so I think it's a change of emphasis. The role and the, the job title is new, mm. but we've always been doing justice work. It's just a, perhaps a new way of kind of shifting our thinking. And the thinking of the world and our city and our diocese into understanding exactly what, what justice means for all of us, not just the people of God, not just us as Christians, but also how other people are engaging in justice work. So, I mean, there are lots of people of, of other faiths and of no faith, good people who are engaging in justice. So as a church and as a diocese, it's, it's, it's enabling it, all of us to understand what that work is and working together on it. Mm. Okay, thank you. Now I'd like to, if I can, just go into a bit about your background and who, a bit about who you are, yeah. because that's, I guess, what, we'll, what you'll bring to this role. Um, and 
your background is really in the dramatic arts, yes. is that right? Yeah. So how do you go from sort of your drama background into the church? church. Good question. So um, <laughs> it is quite a complex story, but it's still about the doing of justice. So um, I was very fortunate. I studied at what, what was the Polytechnic, is now John Moores University. And the drama course then was very much about sort of um, how uh, the creative arts change the world for the better, how the arts shift people's thinking, um, make dif ask difficult questions of society and culture. And a lot of the work that we did um, when I was an undergraduate was about um, political theatre and, and um, popular television and things. So, um, so it's always been part of my practice, but it's interesting to make the shift from your one type of practice into another type of practice. So um, it's taken a little while to make that shift from um, a theatre practitioner into a priestly practitioner, but it's, you know, it comes and goes, it, mm. it, it is. So um, I went on to study at the Institute of Popular Music and did a, an MA and a PhD in, uh, at the Institute of Popular Music. And then I suppose that part of my learning was around how to engage with the popular, with culture, with um, creativity and how to engage people in the practice of dissent and an un, um, uncovering oppression and uncovering difference and, in, and exploring how we can make a change. Right. Initially through the arts and then through our faith. Mm. And during that time, um, when you were, when you were a drama student and then teaching drama and things, were you um, also a Christian? Were you yep. part of worshiping communities then yeah, yeah. as well? I came. I sort of explored. I, I went to church just because I don't really know why I went to church when I was about ten or eleven, and then found myself believing more and more mm -hmm. in the things that were being spoken about, and also saw it as a uh, as an, an environment and a community that could do an immense amount of good f mm -hmm. in the world. And, um, and started to understand more about God's kingdom and the, the freedom of that. So, um, yeah, so all the time, throughout all of that, all of my story, God and, and, and Christ and the Holy Spirit has been working mm -hmm. through all of those things. And do you think that your, um, your faith has, has, has given you permission to be creative? I mean, do you feel yeah. like they're not, the, the two are not in conflict, your, your no, faith and the, and the church are not in conflict? To the absolutely not. I mean, the first act of God was a creative act. Mm. So the first story that we have in the Bible is, the, of, is a God, of a God who made the world. So I just feel like I'm participating as a creative person, participating in you know, something that God just does, yeah. his generosity of creation. Mm, and you never found that they've jarred, or have there been times where you oh, felt gosh, like they yeah, were yeah, yeah. I mean, any any dangerous exploration into culture is going to have its challenges. Mm -hmm. It's sometimes going to feel like it's not releasing. That it sometimes it, creativity and sometimes art and and culture feel like it is oppressing people. That it's not enlivening, not making the world a better place. Mm -hmm. But I guess that's our responsibility to challenge that when that happens to say really. Mm -hmm. Is that really what we want? And I'm not just talking about beautiful things. It's not just about making beautiful things. Mm -hmm. It's about making meaningful things that will change the world for, for the better. Mm -hmm. We're ab about a minute or two away from our break, but I was just wondering if you have any examples of uh, maybe instances where you've been involved in projects where you have seen um, s that change that you're describing. Yeah, I think there's, there's two or three things that we, um, a number of years, few years ago, we looked at um, uh, as, a, as a, a group of Christians who were exploring the arts in the city. We, um, for a number of years, about three years, looked at, um, used harvest time as an exploration of um, the harvest of God's generosity in an urban place. Mm -hmm. So we went down to St Luke's, the bombed out church, and uh, we celebrated our urban life because the, the language of, of um, harvest always seems so rural, doesn't it? So you yeah. get a lovely kind of leafy <laughs> sense of the, the harvest, the, the crops coming in and lambs being born. So how do we explore that in an urban setting? Mm. And it was, it was 
a beautiful thing to have that that juxtaposition between urban life and the harvest, the language of harvest. So mm, wonderful. Yeah. And did and were, uh, did lots of people engage with that sort of of faith and of no faith, like you sort of mentioned? I would before. say that it was um, m that was much more for. Um, people who had a faith or were, uh, you know, around the edges of, of uh, understanding and exploring their faith. Mm -hmm. But the, the art, the creativity that, that came out of it was, uh, a, again, a harvest of generosity that was offered beyond that church and that community. Okay, fantastic. Oh, thanks, Helen. We're going we're gonna to take a break now. And um, if you would like to get in touch, you are more than welcome to just email in your comments or suggestions to faithmatters at baytvliverpool.com. So please join us after the break when we're speaking more to Ellen Loudon. Welcome back to Faith Matters. I'm Laura Pasterfield and I'm hosting today with Ellen Loudon, who is Canon Chancellor at Liverpool Cathedral and the Director of Social Justice for Liverpool Diocese. So Ellen, before the break, we were having kind of an overview of um, your role and the things you're involved in and a little bit about your background in the arts. Yep. Um, what I'd love to know a little bit more about is um, some of the work that you've done in the cathedral already um, and kind of maybe how you're going to build on that now. I think particularly of um, projects you've done for Light Night, which, um, in fact, I think I'm right in saying Liverpool Cathedral has won sort of to a tourism, a tourism award. award. Yeah. So it's obviously a great feature of the city. Yeah. Um, and its arts sort of aspect of that is obviously big. So um, your Light Night kind of projects were were very, I think, very engaging. But could you maybe just describe what yeah. what you've done and and yeah, a little bit about them? Well, one of the um, well, I suppose the key strap line for um, the Paul Cathedral is that it's a risky place. Mm. No, it's a safe place <laughs> to do risky things in the name of Jesus Christ. So, oh, goodness me. So it's a risky place. <laughs> no, a safe place to do risky things. And, and I guess that Light Night is a perfect example of that mm. because what a big risk to open up the cathedral on um, you know, one night of the year and invite everybody in to experience the diversity of arty creative things and some of the collaborations that have occurred as a result have been extraordinary really exciting things and um, so i've worked on light night now for three years um, and each year we've tried to do different things in different spaces so we've got obviously the great big space that uh, usually the light night organisers have brought in something extraordinary that happens in that big space. So those were those amazing projections mm. one year and then um, a collaboration with um, the choir at the cathedral and Psychfest one year uh, using Call Evensong to, and some incredible kind of visual um, graphics and, and things. Um, and then this year was uh, a collaboration with the reader organisation um, with the choirs and um, and various other um, electronic media um, people, so that and that was a really interesting thing that happened in the big space. Mm. And one of the things that the thing that I've been asked to do for the last three years is to look at how the worship um, um, is is explored during light night in the smaller spaces, so um, in the Lady Chapel and in the chapter house. And that's been really interesting because try to um, use the creativity and the creative explosion of, of light night mm. to, um, to open up those spaces to um, worship, um, very accessible worship, um, and s offer some sort of visual um, uh, experience for people. So one year we had a giant weather balloon um, was absolutely huge that we hung from the ceiling, one well, of the balcony in the chapter house, and projected um, images of the earth from space. And that was really interesting to have that visual image and then the story of creation being told, um, recorded with some um, ambient sounds as a soundtrack for that. Uh, it was it was an extraordinary experience. It felt very um, peaceful but also quite challenging to hear that story 
being told in that space in you know with a huge great big weather balloon. And was it from Genesis 1 that yeah. the story of creation? Creation yeah. and creativity. And then the next year to have um, that story retold by um, small children. So from children from Gladys Street School in Walton told that story um, again. So they told it in their own words of the story of creation. So it's the one year having it told one way and another way the following year. And then downstairs in the Lady Chapel, we've had some quite extraordinary collaborations with the um, Tibetan singing bowls. Uh, they have a little orchestra and that was that was incredible music um, in an extraordinary space. Um, very well attended, lots of people wanted to come and experience that. Um, and then using light, the light that um, shines automatically through the sun going down through the windows in the Lady Chapel to, to fill that space with light as, as it changes during the evening of light night has been really beautiful and using incense to create um, the, 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 the beams of light and also that sense of smell. So, mm. and then this year the collaboration was with a woman called Alicia who did um, uh, an installation uh, that was hand washing, and it was beautiful. Uh, it's her. St it's a story, an a, a, an old story that she interpreted in her way, in and made it site specific into the Lady Chapel, and a piece of street art that um, was. Uh, created into almost like an icon that we placed uh, down by the altar. Um, and that was really interesting to see how that was received. A street artist um, called C Block, who, who does lots of street art across the northwest, well, across the you know, across the country, created this um, icon for us. Um, and then just having all these candles and um, it was just really, really beautiful um, use of the space. And I think it creates an imaginative and um, uh, just a, a welcoming but mm. challenging as well. I think I think well definitely when I when I saw um, uh, I was remi I'm reminded very much of that piece in the in the chapter house with the well I thought it was a white parachute with sort of oh yeah that was that was the second year with the, the clouds yeah but that was I found that incredibly um, a very spiritual experience which yeah. I really wasn't expecting from I guess an art piece you kind of think you're going to be objective and observe but it was so um, interactive and and just sitting in that space it felt more than just a piece of art. And it reminds me of years ago being, um, it's probably about 10, 12 years ago, in the, in the Tate in London, in the Turbine Hall, there was a big exhibition with a, a rising sun on the ceiling yeah. and they filled yeah. it full of smoke. And, and it just the whole, the whole space was gigantic, was sort of had this red glow. And it just felt so atmospheric that kind of couples were lying on the floor, yeah, staring yeah. up at the, the glass ceiling and things. And it, it was it just, that was the only thing I could liken it to. And it struck yeah. me that, um, that, that it's actually, the cathedral is a very serious um, place and it takes seriously art yeah and yeah, yeah. it's not but I think what's especially clever about it is that it's not just about art but there's this worshipping dynamic yeah so even if you maybe you know came there just wanting to observe some some artwork you might find that you really encounter something or have a, a spiritual experience now I know um, worship isn't really um, I guess particularly your your remit but um, presumably you will have some um, influence or the worshipping space will influence your yeah. work there. Do you have any plans so far about what you'd like to be doing, um, either whether it's sort of creative things or maybe just in terms of the social justice side of it? Yeah. Um, I think that they're forming and I suppose they're informed by my already existing practice in the cathedral. And I mean, the piece of work that we did, well, we're doing last yeah. week and this week, um, looking at the art and looking how that uh, that exists already in the cathedral and looking at how that inhabits the space, how it lives in the space. Mm. And a lot of those things were not commissioned for the space. Some of them were, mm. but some of them have been placed there and they, um, you know, affect the grand, amazing, beautiful space that the mm. cathedral offers and vice versa. Mm. So it's that kind of work, I suppose, yeah. at the moment that we're interested in, aren't we? And it was a really interesting session yeah. last week and to find out how that um, it, is it developed this yeah. week. Yeah. 
So for the, that's for, for those of you who don't know, we, we've been working on an art trail um, for, the, for the cathedral. And the idea is that it's not just um, looking at the artwork from a kind of, again, objective point of view, but it, you can enter into meditations with it and, and sort of, it's only just seven pieces at the moment. Yeah. Um, but it might be a fun thing to come along to. Yeah. So Ellen, yeah. now you've got, um, we've just got a couple of minutes left. Just any final thoughts or, or reflections so far on, on your first two days? Your first two days. Uh, any plans that maybe you, you were kind of set on or that you could share with us? Um, well, I, what I really am interested in is um, how the social just the work of social justice that each of us has the potential to be um, working out, whether you have a faith or no faith or of different faiths, how, um, how we're going to talk about that, how we're going to articulate it and how we're going to live together to make the world a better place. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I guess that that's, I need to spend some time listening and finding out and, and hearing what's already happening and then perhaps explore how we can make even better connections with each other so there's less replication and, um, and harder work um, and, and just spending time together doing those things that we think are, is important to change the world. Okay, lovely. Now, um, if people want to get in touch with you, yep. is the best way to maybe get in touch through email? Something yeah, like that? you can email me, or um, if you if you if the email becomes a bit complicated, then you can always just get in touch with St James's House, which is HQ for the diocese. Right, lovely. And I've got here your email address is ellen.loudon at liverpool.anglican.org. So it's been wonderful having Great, you on you. today. Thank you, Ellen, so much. And uh, join us again next time with Faith Matters, where I'll be here and it'll be great to see you too. Bye-bye. <laughs>